I'm Brett Hessel, and you're watching Can You Be Famous TV. What got me into music was probably my brother was 10 years older than me and, you know, somewhat of a hero to me because he was already 16 when I was 6, so it was the, he had the car, and I thought that was awesome. He, he had a Nova and a Hot Rod and a bunch of cool stuff. And he had band, and, and uh, they had a band in the bedroom across the hall from me. I just thought it was awesome that they were... They were able to sound like the radio, and it was just my brother and his crony friends in there playing and jamming. And uh, so I started sneaking in there when they were out on the weekends, and he caught me eventually and, and was cool with it and said, hey, turn it up a little bit. And one thing led to another, and I ended up with my own bands, and that was pretty much the love was just seeing people do music, you know, as a band and, and a, a group of people making something happen that was just cool, you know. That was that's what was what I loved about it. Playing with Dark New Day. Oh, I mean it's really no way. It's like having your fantasy football team on the field, you know? Like the the perfect running back and the perfect quarterback and the perfect receivers and to watch them all in action and working together seamlessly, it's, it, that's exactly what Dark New Day was. It's like Will's a quarterback on drums, and you know everybody on their instrument was the guy, and and, and could have carried a, an entire band on their talent alone. So to be the singer for that band was was an, an honor, and something it was something we'd talked about doing for a year. I, I'd been hounding those guys. I mean, like, oh man, let me do something with you guys. And, Seeing them in bands from so long ago, we were just teenagers, and and watching them develop as musicians, and seeing them pop up. You know, Clint gets the record deal with Seven Dust, and and uh, all of a sudden Troy's got a deal, I had a deal, and then Will's got a deal, and and these are all my friends, and it was really exciting to watch all this happen. But standing on stage with with that group of people is you know, playing your music, and all I had to do was sing. It was was pretty much that's the best musical experience ever. Fondest memories of being on the road was the first night we were uh, following to fuel around in Virgos Merlot. And they had a bus, so we were just trying to keep up with our van and trailer, you know. And, and uh, we're all wired, and we're pulling into Washington, D.C., and it was my first time to be in Washington, D.C. And as we're coming up over a hill on the interstate that's leading down into the city, um, our song came on the radio, and it was the first time any of us had heard it on a radio station outside of Orlando, which JRR here in Orlando was always very supportive of, of Virgo's Merlot, and and, uh, and there were, we were blessed to have that happen. But the first time we heard it, like, unsolicited, you know, that wasn't in our home base, was, was in Washington. And that was like, I remember just looking around and high-fiving everybody and being like, wow, that was, that's what I've been waiting on for so long, is that, that one little moment of, where it wasn't because I called and it wasn't because they knew me and it wasn't because they were doing me a favor. It was just they liked the song and they played it. And that was to have that, that was probably the best payoff. Touring memories, I mean, you know, narrowly escaping death with drummer JD driving the the, the Virgus Merlot tour van. We skidded across an eight lane interstate on the ice one day and I was just looking out the side side window of the van and here comes some cars, and here we are, and I'm sure it looked funnier from their perspective because here comes this van with all wheels locked up, trailer wheels and van wheels all just stopped. Shh! Sliding across the road. Good times. There's, there's a million of those stories. Um, the call to playing Creed was, it, it was, it was unusual. And it was a little bit weird because I considered myself a friend of Brian Marshall's, and to be going out and replacing him, I, where on one hand I wanted to help out and I wanted to, you know, th that was an awesome opportunity that anybody would 
would want to try out, you know, to be able to play in front of 30,000 people on average a night and do that five nights a week is just, you, you know, that's everything I dreamed of when I was a kid and playing in front of large crowds and explosions and pyro and video screens and cameras and that. You know, I had a helicopter pointing a camera at me. You know, that's just stuff that, that you don't, you know, that, that was not in the package of things I was I was dreaming about when I was a kid. There was a little bonus, like helicopters coming up buildings, and there's cameras pointed at me, and, I, you know, it makes you a little uncomfortable, actually. But um, it was it was great to get the call, but I felt I felt sort of bad to be taking Brian Marshall's place because, you know, he's, he's a really sweet dude, man. And so, but... I wanted to, I wanted them to keep the ball rolling because it was good for rock and and rock fans. You know, Creed was one of the only bands that were doing numbers like that, and they were competing with Britney Spears and NSYNC for first week sales and Billboard. You know, and that's that's amazing thing that a rock band with guitars and drums and people really playing and people really singing was atop the uh, the big pop groups uh, uh, at that current moment. So it was it was a good time to be in rock anyway. So to be able to get that call and to go do that gig was was really special. I didn't really start out wanting to record and produce. It, it was it was sort of a necessity. My brother um, went on to go to college and 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 was a, a music major, and ended up developing a recording studio engineering program for the college he was going to, and. Uh, he needed bands during the summer, during the summer courses, and I was out of school, so he made me a pet project on several occasions, which was awesome for me because I got to record some of my music that I'd been writing and, and kind of, you know, recording on my jam box in my room, which most people that are watching this won't know what a jam box is. But it used to be a radio you could hold on your shoulder and, and everyone could hear it. It wasn't so private and personal like the, the earbuds, you know what I mean? It was just, it was more like, everybody check out new, the new Ozzy. You don't like Ozzy? Where's everybody going? But um, getting to go do that was, 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 I got to, you know, my brother was like, well, here's where you put a mic on this, and here's why, and here's what this does, and, and here's what you go through after that, and this is what you this, and this is what that does. So I was getting sort of a, a guerrilla-style training on how to record when I was doing these projects with my brother, and... Um, and that sort of set me up to, uh, you know, I got a four-track recorder, and I started doing demos for the bands that way. But um, I had bands that were kind of listening to the stuff that I was doing and asking, hey, man, can you just record a couple of songs for us? And that's sort of what got me into it. It was I was doing, doing it more as a favor for people and, uh, and, and trying to help out. So that sort of gave me the confidence that maybe I had an ear for it and and I uh I knew that the a serious recording equipment budget was in my future so <laughs> that's what I'm doing now oh man see once I start listing these bands I get a million phone calls from the other bands that I don't <laughs> that I don't mention and if I do forget somebody, I'm really sorry. But the bands that are probably going to be on your radar soon, Star City Meltdown signed to Standby Records. Uh, they have an album release maybe first end of first quarter this year. Uh, and um, another band, State Your Cause, has got a has is is working with uh, Sound Mind Recording. I did a band from Wichita, Kansas called Solicit. They're doing really well and have a lot of business things popping for them too, and, uh, and and most of these bands are doing this independently and you know and you making use of their own best asset, which is their their own fingers and brains, and uh, you know, copy and paste and links, copy and paste and links, copy and paste and links. That's what you got to do right now. You introduce people to your music, check them, you know. Hook them with a funny video. Hook them with a video you did of you guys playing live. You know, you know that's what people people they're used to getting that on their their news feed. So if you're not out there doing that for your band, you're gonna you're gonna get lost and and you're gonna go away. Having having can you be famous? 
you're opening the door for people to get offer you critique and for and to give you their opinion and you can learn a lot from from people's honest opinions and of course youtube is known for its bashers and ha and and what, what are they called trolls i guess they're trolls yeah so the trolls sit around and they just wait on an opportunity to, to diss and bash and trash your video whatever it is no matter if it's good or bad or whatever their their pastime is to to diss on stuff on the internet so it it gets it gets a little like it's not as valuable for the for the artist because they're not getting real feedback they're just getting the guy who who only likes Deicide or you know Sepultura and and he makes fun of every other band without without prejudice to if you're an acoustic folk act or uh you know a Ronnie James Dio tribute band he's he's comparing you to Sepultura which doesn't really make any sense so to be able to have a site where you can get some honest feedback and you can get you know votes or, or whatever whatever you're 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 looking for from the site you know the the response you get will be a better gauge on where you're at you know with the fan base i think Tragic.